家好，欢迎来到洛杉矶华资讯网的直播现场，我是主播莉亚。今天大家一起探讨的是一个越来越普遍，但是仍然被很多家长忽视的重要健康问题，那就是儿童近视发展。全球儿童近视的情况正在变得越来越严峻。根据世界卫生组织 （WHO） 的数据显示，目前全球有 30% 的人口都患有近视。那么，到了2050年，这一比例预计将会上升到 50% 也就是说，你遇到的每两个人当中就有一个人是患有近视的。那么更值得关注的是，近些年来呢，近视发生的年龄也在大幅提前，很多小孩子在五岁、六岁甚至更小的年龄就已经出现了看不清的症状。那么今天节目邀请到的是权威专家，来自加州知名儿童近视控制中心高登眼镜 （Golden Vision） 的梁医生 Dr. Eric 梁做客我们的节目。梁医生呢，在儿童近视管理和角膜塑形镜 o r t h o c a e 方面有着非常丰富的临床经验，尤其是在高风险儿童的近视控制上累积了大。这样的成功案例，首先呢，先请梁医生跟我们打个招呼吧。Hello， 你好，大家好，我是梁医生。Thank you so much. So, could you please brief introduce yourself and Golden Vision? Of course, yeah. So,、uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here to bring you more information about myopia control. So, my name is Dr. Eric Leung. I work at Golden Vision in San Gabriel, and we're part of nine practices throughout California that really specialize in myopia control and myopia management. That's awesome. So I heard Golden Vision before,、mm -hmm. and it really like it's it's kind of like everywhere, you know,、yeah. in supermarket and in some like Chinese community. So, but I I've never know that you guys actually not just like selling glasses, but also have like myopia control like methods, playing you know service provided to people. Yeah. So we provide comprehensive eye care. That means we. Diagnose and treat eye diseases, and that includes myopia. So when we look at myopia, it's not just you can't see clear, you need glasses, but in fact, it's a start of a progression of diseases、mm -hmm. related to multiple late stage eye diseases that can affect your vision later on. Right. I think myopia is really a pandemic right now.、Um, so kids' vision nowadays they're pretty bad, to be honest. And many young kids they have myopia as early as five or six years old. Could you please first explain what myopia is and what astigmatism is and why they're so important nowadays? Yeah. So myopia, also known as nearsightedness, basically is when your eye grows too long and it causes your vision in the distance to become blurry. So you can see things up close, clear, but far away things look. Um, blurry and hard to see,、mm -hmm. and astigmatism, which is often mistaken for myopia, is when the eye is actually misshapen or has an irregular shape in the front. So that can cause blurry vision both up close and far away.、Mm -hmm. And put together, that whole prescription, that whole number, myopia and your astigmatism, is your whole prescription. Because you're seeing patients every day, and how do you observe like more kids having more myopia? Like、uh, situation when yeah. So you mentioned earlier that、uh, the WHO and there's recent studies that actually has looked at all of the studies combined together. So 145 independent studies,、um, total about 2.1 million、uh, cohort of patients、mm -hmm. sees that right now in the world, the world population, we have about 30 percent of the world is myopic or has nearsightedness. And by 2050, that number is going to jump up to 50%. That's、mm -hmm. a huge increase from 30% to 50%.、Mm -hmm. Even right now, just in the U.S., our number is already 42%. So、mm -hmm. we're actually going to hit that 50% mark earlier than 2050. We'll be there probably around 2030. That's only about five years away. And being highly myopic is directly related. To having more serious eye complications in the future,、mm -hmm. so eye diseases like cataracts,、mm -hmm. glaucoma, myopic macular degeneration, which is a type of degeneration of the retina、mm -hmm. in the back of the eye, and retinal detachments. These、oh. can take away your vision either very suddenly、mm -hmm. or very slowly,、mm -hmm. and a lot of these are really terrible because we don't have good cures. We can treat them if complications arise. But the best way to treat it is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Oh my God! And especially for Asian people, I feel Asian people are so super myopic. You know,、yes. in China, there's like eight, um, eighty-nine percent of the teenagers they wearing glasses. That's right.、Um, just take me as an example. I wear glasses when I was six years old.、Uh, I feel like I was the hittest. 
person in the world.、Yeah. Nobody gonna marry me. <laughs> and then at thirty years old, I got like new technology of、um, other technology lenses to、mm-hmm. help me get rid of glasses. Right. So what caused it? Why Asian people were so myopic? Yeah. So. Especially, and you're right. In East Asian countries, that number is eighty, ninety percent by the time you're looking at high school seniors. So right now, we're looking at it. There's genetic factors involved. So if one or both parents of a child are myopic, that child is much more likely to become myopic.、Mm-hmm. And then there's lifestyle and、uh, habits. So daily habits make a big difference. All kids now are spending a lot more time indoors than outdoors than ever before.、Mm-hmm. Uh, on top of that, we have a greater emphasis on education. Kids are studying more; they're reading more. In Asia, in China, kids are studying, you know, eight hours, ten hours, twelve hours a day. And then on top of that, there's recreation. So after their study, they're on their phones, they're on their iPads, and so kids are always looking at things up close. And、mm-hmm. the eye is adapting to those changes. It's saying. I don't need to see things far away clear anymore.、Oh. I can just see things up close clear, and that's okay. And so we're basically prompting those changes with our lifestyle and habits. Got it. That's pretty clear. So, what can parents do? I mean, if I wanted to help my daughter not to have severe myopia, let's say, and slow the progression of the myopia,、uh, what should I do? So, there's a couple things you can do at home. That's really easy. Just trying to encourage good healthy habits. So.、Mm-hmm. As much as possible, limit screen time and things up close, especially for younger children. And then I like to you, encourage patients to do the twenty 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 rule, which means every twenty minutes, try to look at something that's twenty feet away for about twenty seconds.、Mm-hmm. That can help relax the eye muscles, kind of reset the focusing system.、Mm-hmm. And then clinically, we have a lot of proven methods and clinically studied methods that are effective and safe for treating and preventing myopia progression. So we have things like ortho K lenses, which are custom-made nightwear lenses.、Mm-hmm. There's daywear soft lenses called dual focus or multifocal lenses、um, that have myopia progression、um, management tools. And then there's now new development for ophthalmic lenses,、mm-hmm. so lenses that you can put in glasses that are coming out that will help to prevent myopia progression. And there's also medications that we can prescribe, like low dose atropine. That's awesome. You、uh, you mentioned about、um, the author K lenses. I heard that before.、Mm-hmm. And how does it work? I know many people many people had it, but、yeah. um, just tell our audience. Yeah. So author K lenses are custom made to fit every patient's individual cornea. So our eyes are like our fingerprints. Everything is completely unique. So we have to measure each patient's cornea using some tools. So we have something called a corneal topographer that checks the exact shape of the front of the eye、mm-hmm. in all different directions. And then the clear part of the eye, we actually can mold. So that part of the eye called the cornea,、um, when we put the lens on, we actually have the patient wear the lens at night. And so, kind of like a、uh, retainer for teeth,、mm-hmm. it can actually change the shape of your teeth overnight. The、right. same thing, the lens does that overnight, and it gently, gently reshapes the cornea. When the patient in the morning wakes up, they take the lens out. They can see clearly without having to wear any glasses or contacts during the day. Got it. So, who are the candidates? I mean, kids can get myopia as early as five or six years old. I mean, they're super young. Can、yeah. they get ortho K lenses? Yes. So, we have kids fit in ortho K lenses, basically as soon as they're able to do it and more、uh, mature enough to take care of the lenses. Our number one priority is always safety and care. So, if the patient isn't quite ready for the lens, then we don't necessarily recommend it. But if they feel like They are they're concerned about their prescription getting worse. They already have a prescription now. They don't like to wear glasses. All of those types of patients are great candidates,、mm. and we fit kids as young as six, seven, eight years old in ortho K lenses. So,、uh, are there any like a golden time to begin with the treatment? Let's say, I'm fifteen or sixteen or seventeen years old. Would be like too old for the ortho K lenses. Not true. We have kids in f- ortho K lenses. Well past their teenage years into college, and then even after that,、oh. they can even stay in those lenses that long. But there's no the best time I would say to be in ortho K or in any myopia management tool is the earlier the po- as as possible.、Mm-hmm. So the idea is prevention rather than treatment. We're、mm-hmm. trying to prevent the prescription from getting worse, and the earlier we start ortho K treatment or myopia management, the better the long term outcomes. Got it. So will we come back if we stop using them? 
So ortho K is a treatment, not a cure. So it can help take away your prescription as long as you wear the lens. But if you don't wear the lens, your prescription will come back mm -hmm. and actually regain completely over time. Okay. So it's a temporary treatment, which is kind of good if you think about it, because it's not anything invasive. It's not surgical. Mm -hmm. We're not making any permanent changes to the eye. If the kid decides they don't like it or the parent decides they don't want them on it, they just take off the lens and the eye goes back to its original shape mm -hmm. and everything goes back to normal. Got it. Could it be possible by like using ortho lenses for over 10 years, would it cost any like intolerance or anything? No. So all of our patients after a certain period of time generally will switch to a different type of correction. So they'll go back to glasses wearing regular soft contacts. Eventually, some of them go to do LASIK or other refractive procedures. Right. So none of it basically prevents you from doing anything in the future. That's awesome to know my choices. So yeah. the most important question, how much does it cost? Because um, it matters, right? Because the parents going to pay for that. Yes. So it's important to understand that there's a lot of different tools for the job. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Ortho-K, that's only one tool. And within Ortho-K, there's different brands, there's different parameters. We have to look at all the different measurements in the eye. And it depends on the prescription of the patient. So. It's, that's a difficult question to answer, but I think the best way for you to really find out is to come in for a free consultation. We'll take all the different measurements, including your prescription, the shape of your eye, and tell you which lens you're best fit for and mm -hmm. why. Talking about the consultation, so what does the consultation process look like? For example, if I bring my daughter to you, what's she going to experience? Yeah, so it'll look like a regular eye exam with a couple of extra tests. Mm -hmm. So we will check their prescription. It's we're going to ask you your typical questions, which one's better, one or two. Mm -hmm. Once we find an accurate prescription, we will take measurements using something called a corneal topographer. We mm -hmm. may take something called an axial length measurement. Mm -hmm. So that's something called a biometer, an optical biometer, which checks the length of the eye from front to back. Mm -hmm. So we have all of this information, and then we can design either a custom lens or a custom treatment plan, prescribe medications based on the need. Got it. Uh, does does kids need to be dilate their pupil? Occasionally. So sometimes, depending on the prescription, if we want to be extra safe and extra certain, we can dilate the patient. That will give us additional information. And it happens. I don't say. I don't think it happens all the time. Okay. Yeah. So it just uh, depends on it the just different depends. situation. Yeah. That's wonderful. So how many follow up visit uh, they need to follow up each yeah. year? So generally speaking, we will see our patients back roughly three or four times a year at the minimum. So that mm -hmm. means every three months or so. Um, in the beginning, it, during the fitting process, when we're first teaching you how to put the lens on, take the lens off, we will see you back really frequently. So mm -hmm. uh, our typical process, we'll see the patient back on the first day after nightwear and then one week after that. And then after we, if the lens fits well, we'll see them back every three months. Got it. It's just a way to keep the effective, effectiveness and safety, right? That's it. Yeah, we just check for those. Got it. Thank you so much, Dr. Leon, for giving us a um, very informative episode. So, if you are interested, you can go to the Gaodong website, or you can scan the QR code on the two There will be a Chinese answer to answer your question. Of course, the Chinese is not very good at speaking Chinese. The doctor is able to speak Chinese. The doctor is able to speak Chinese. But if there is a patient who comes in, then actually 90% of the time, he can speak Chinese with the doctor, including the regular Chinese and the Chinese language. The Chinese language is even better. Cantonese is even better, right? Yeah, 比较好。<laughs> <laughs> Got it. So, you know, you don't have to worry too much. And also, there are other people who can provide Chinese service for you. So, Chinese service here, you don't have to worry too much. Another thing is, like the doctor said, do you know your child is suitable for this kind of OK lens or other treatment options? The most important thing is to go in and do a free screening test to help your child to decide if he has any kind of choice. So, just like what I said, he is not a one-dimensional treatment. 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 只是帮助你减缓近视的发展，而近视一旦发展，它就没有办法再回去了。It's not, it can be reversed, right? Yes, correct. 那如果呢，大家感兴趣的话，都可以去扫描屏幕上的二维码，或者是直接去高登眼镜。好了，以上就今天节目的全部内容了。感谢大家继续关注。下一期节目呢，我们将讨论更多有关于儿童近视控制的方式，以及他们有效吗？还有大家最关心的这个安全性的问题啊，家长如何呢帮助小朋友度过这一段适应的时间？我是主播莉亚，感谢大家。关注，谢谢梁医生做客，谢谢，下期节目不见不散。